Ever wondered which country holds the Guinness World Record for the largest religious structure? No? Well, don't worry, we're here to fill you in anyway. We're embarking on an unexpected journey, a quiz of sorts, all about the captivating, curious, and sometimes downright comical facts about Cambodia. And the answer to that record-breaking question? Well, we're keeping that under wraps for now. So buckle up and let's dive in, stick around till the end. You might surprise yourself with what you learn about this Southeast Asian gem. So, what is Cambodia famous for? No, it's not just Angelina Jolie's movie Tomb Raider, folks. Let's travel to the land of Watts, where the ancient whispers of the past echo through the labyrinthine corridors of grand temples. Cambodia, my friends, is a world-renowned treasure trove of architectural marvels and spiritual sanctity, with over a thousand temples dotting its lush landscape. Strap on your explorer hats as we delve into the mysteries of Angkor Wat, the jewel in Cambodia's crown. It's not just the largest religious structure in the world, but also a testament to the genius of the Khmer Empire, who built it in the 12th century. But hey, did you know that Angkor Wat was initially a Hindu temple dedicated to Lord Vishnu? It's only later that it embraced Buddhism, much like your favorite actor changing genres. Ever had a craving for tarantulas or scorpions? No? Well, you're in for a treat. Welcome to the culinary wild side of Cambodia, a country where the menu can be as adventurous as the jungle treks. Here, the exotic merges with the everyday to create a gastronomic experience that's nothing short of extraordinary. Let's start off with the arachnophobe's nightmare and foodie's delight, the deep-fried tarantula. Known as A-Ping and Khmer, these are not your ordinary spiders. These eight-legged delicacies are bred specifically for the plate, marinated in a mix of MSG, sugar, and chicken stock, before being deep-fried till they reach a perfect crunch. The taste? A unique blend of chicken and cod with a dash of the unexpected. Next up, we have the crispy critters that are sure to make your skin crawl and your taste buds tingle. Edible insects. From crickets to silkworms, these crunchy morsels are often served as a side dish or snack, seasoned with chili, lime, and local spices. They're high in protein, and according to locals, irresistibly delicious. But don't think that Cambodia's unusual delicacies stop at creepy crawlies. Ever tried fermented fish paste? Known as prahok, this pungent condiment is a staple in Cambodian cuisine, lending a distinct flavor to a myriad of dishes. It's an acquired taste, but once you get the hang of it, you might just find yourself reaching for seconds. And let's not forget the krolin, a sticky rice treat cooked in bamboo tubes. This isn't your average rice dish. The bamboo infuses the rice with a unique flavor, and the added beans, grated coconut, and a little salt make this a sweet and savory delight. So there you have it. From fried spiders to fermented fish paste, Cambodia's food scene is a roller coaster of flavors, textures, and yes, a few surprises. It's a place where food is not just sustenance, but an adventure, a story, a journey into the heart of a culture that embraces the unusual with open arms and empty stomachs. Who knew Fear Factor could be a dining experience, right? Imagine going shopping and the cashier gives you change in a different currency. Welcome to Cambodia. Now we've all been there. You're in a foreign country, you've just bought a souvenir, and you're handed back a fistful of coins and notes. But in Cambodia, the currency confusion is on a whole new level. Here, you're not just dealing with one currency, but two. Yes, you heard that right, two. In Cambodia, the local currency, the Cambodian riel, shares the stage with none other than the US dollar. Picture this, you walk into a store, pick up a bottle of water, and the price tag reads 4,000 reels or $1. You hand over a dollar bill, and in return, you get a bunch of reels as change. It's like playing a never-ending game of currency exchange. Now you might be thinking, why on earth would a country use two currencies? Well, it's a bit of a historical hangover. The US dollar was widely used during the United Nations Transitional Authority in Cambodia in the early 90s, and it just kind of stuck around. But wait, it gets even more interesting. There's no such thing as a Cambodian dime or nickel. Instead, anything less than a dollar is given in reels. So, if something costs 50 cents, you're looking at a cool 2,000 reels. And if you're thinking of converting your dollars to reels, think again. While you can use both currencies freely, most ATMs will only dispense dollars. So, you'll probably end up with a wallet full of greenbacks and a pocket full of reels. The dual currency system in Cambodia is certainly a unique feature, adding another layer to the country's rich and complex tapestry. It might be a little confusing at first, but hey, it's all part of the adventure. So, when you're packing for your trip, remember to leave a little extra room in your wallet for those extra bills. And here's a final piece of advice for those planning a Cambodian adventure. 
Remember when in Cambodia always expect change in dollars. Ever heard of a king with no political power but plenty of wives? You've guessed it, we're talking about the king of Cambodia. Let's dive into the royal realm of Cambodia, where the king reigns supreme, but not in the way you might expect. Unlike many other monarchs around the world, the Cambodian king doesn't hold significant political power. Yes, you heard it right, no decision-making, no veto power, nothing of that sort. His role is largely ceremonial, kind of like being the country's number one cheerleader. But don't be fooled, he still gets the royal treatment, and we're not just talking about the palatial residence and the grand ceremonies. Now here's where things get interesting. In the past, the kings of Cambodia were known for their polygamous lifestyle. Now before you start imagining a royal version of a reality TV dating show, let's clear a few things up. Polygamy wasn't just about personal preferences or love affairs, it was a strategic move, a way to forge alliances, strengthen royal bloodlines, and ensure the continuity of the dynasty. Some kings had dozens of wives, and if you think keeping track of one anniversary is hard, imagine having to remember the dates for dozens. But times have changed, and the current king, King Norodom Siamoni, is a bit of a deviation from this historical norm. He's a bachelor king, with no wives or children to his name. So he's breaking the mold in his own way, showing that being a king is about more than just following tradition. However, the historical tales of the polygamous kings of Cambodia still echo through the grand halls of the royal palace in Phnom Penh, reminding us of a time when kingship was not just about ceremonial duties, but also about managing a royal household of epic proportions. So there you have it, being a king in Cambodia is not all about ruling, but it sure is about enjoying. Ever tried speaking Khmer? No? Well don't worry, you're not alone. Khmer, the official language of Cambodia, is a language that can make even the most seasoned language learners break into a cold sweat. It's a fascinating language, with its own unique script and a dizzying array of vowels and consonants. But don't let that scare you away. Khmer is a language that likes to play hard to get. You see, it has an alphabet with 33 consonants, 24 dependent vowels, and a dozen independent vowels. If that wasn't enough, the language also boasts of its own unique script that could easily be mistaken for a complex form of hieroglyphics or a secret code. Now let's talk about pronunciation. In English we have around 44 sounds, but Khmer, it has a staggering 74. That's right, 74 unique sounds that can make you feel like you're trying to speak while simultaneously juggling flaming torches. And then there's the matter of sentence structure. In English we follow the subject-verb-object format. But Khmer, it likes to mix things up. The typical sentence structure is subject-object-verb. So, while in English we would say, I love Cambodia in Khmer, you'd say something that translates to, I Cambodia love. It's like a linguistic version of musical chairs. Despite its complexities, Khmer is a beautiful language, full of nuances and subtleties that can only be fully appreciated when you dive in and try to learn it. And the Cambodians? They love it when you try to speak their language. Even if all you can say is hello and thank you, they'll appreciate the effort and respond with the warmest of smiles. So there you have it, a brief and somewhat humorous introduction to the secret language of Cambodia, Khmer. It's complex, it's challenging, but it's also incredibly rewarding. So, if you ever find yourself in a Cambodian language class, remember you asked for it. So, what have we learned today? No, it's not how to cook a tarantula. Let's take a quick stroll down memory lane and recap our Cambodian adventure, shall we? Now don't worry, there won't be a pop quiz at the end. Or will there be? First things first. Cambodia. A country that could easily be mistaken for a Watts theme park. With over a thousand temples scattered across the landscape, it's a paradise for the history buffs and archaeologists alike. And let's not forget the grandeur of Angkor Wat, a structure so iconic it's as if the Eiffel Tower and the Great Wall had a baby. Then we took a detour to explore the more exotic side of Cambodian cuisine. From deep-fried tarantulas to the unconventional prahok, a fermented fish paste that could give blue cheese a run for its money, it's safe to say Cambodia is not for the faint-hearted foodies. Moving on to the currency conundrum. If you thought Monopoly money was confusing, try juggling between Cambodian reels and US dollars. But hey, at least it keeps your math skills sharp. We also got a glimpse of the Cambodian monarchy, where the king may not be as lonely as you'd think. With a political system that's a unique blend of constitutional monarchy and multi-party democracy, it's like watching Game of Thrones with a twist. And who could forget the secret language? With its alphabet boasting 74 letters, Khmer leaves English in the dust. And don't even get me started on the pronunciation. It's safe to say, mastering Khmer could be a lifelong endeavor. Oh, and remember the quiz question from the start? 
Here's the answer. The official religion of Cambodia is Theravada Buddhism, practiced by almost 95% of the population. Got it right? Give yourself a pat on the back. And there you have it folks, a crash course on Cambodia, the land of temples, tarantulas and dollars, who knew learning could be so much fun.